Like many other historical shows Netflix puts out, Barbarians isn't a complete work of fact. Much like The Last Kingdom and Vikings, the show is set hundreds of years ago, so there's no way of telling exactly how things happened, so the team in charge have been given a bit of creative freedom, which is to be expected. Today, we are discussing how close Barbarians actually is to historical fact, so don't go anywhere. First up, let's discuss what actually happened. The show is building up to the Battle of Teutoburg Forest, the most detailed history of which actually comes from the Roman historian Marcus Velius Paterculus in the 1924 edition of his Roman History II. In the book, he claims that Sigmar raised his son, Arminius, into a noble family in the northwest region of Germany, close to modern-day Netherlands. Arminius was sent to Rome alongside his brother as tributes, where they were given a modern education. Of course, Arminius's name is actually the Romanized version of his original name, which no one knows. A career in the army beckoned, and he was soon sent back to northwest Germany to assist the Romans in subjugating his own people. However, he betrayed the Roman general Varus and gathered the local tribes together before he himself was betrayed by Segestes, a Cheruscan noble who didn't like him. Segestes warned Varus that Arminius was plotting against him, but Varus did not believe the rumor. However, he should have. Arminius lured him to a forest before ambushing him with local Germanic tribes, utterly destroying Varus and his three Roman legions. The Germanic forces ran rampant and annihilated the Romans in one of their worst defeats up to that point. Varus decided to commit suicide before his head was sent to the Emperor Augustus, but this is the only information we have surrounding the Battle of Teutoburg. Everything else in the show, apart from what we just described, is pure fiction. What else do we know then? Let's see. Well, as we've mentioned, it is largely impossible to accurately verify what did and didn't happen, but there are a few things we do know for sure. Germany as we know it only came into existence in the 19th century, and during this period, Arminius was used as a symbol of German unification. During this time, and even up to this day in some quarters, people believed that Arminius had united the Germanic tribes. This would take an enormous effort to truly unite the barbarian clans across a huge area. In reality, Arminius simply united a few clans in the neighboring areas for a brief time. This didn't stop a German nationalist architect building a statue of the barbarian hero in the Teutoburg Forest. Depicted as a huge, muscly, blonde hair, blue eyed Caucasian, this almost certainly wouldn't have been the case. During this period, around 9 AD, when the show is set, people simply wouldn't have been this big due to things like poor diet and lack of knowledge surrounding things like muscle building. Of course, Arminius's legend has since been hijacked by the Nazis, who were attracted to the idea of the man thanks to his staunch defense of the Germanic peoples, as well as his perceived Aryan roots. He was immortalized in one German textbook from 1939, which claimed the purity of German blood was saved from the danger of ethnic poisoning, saved through the action of the first great political leader in German history, Arminius. What do you make of this? So, is there anything else we can take from the show? Let's see. Well, it is widely accepted that Arminius was a high-ranking Roman officer who actually deceived his superiors to free his own people. This is obviously a noble action which the show captures well. One thing they probably didn't get right is the casting of the main actor. Lawrence Rupp is a dark-haired gentleman with a darker complexion than Arminius ever would have had. Rupp has a slightly more Mediterranean look, but Arminius would have been very fair-skinned and almost certainly had light-colored hair. It's thought that the makers of the show did this deliberately to move away from associations with the Nazis, something which German schools in particular tried to do after the war, almost completely cutting Germanic tribes out of history altogether. However, critics have suggested that you cannot diversify history, but the show's creators have almost certainly attempted to depict him as a Roman officer, as he was, with short hair, as opposed to the full-bearded Germanic warrior he might have been had he stayed in his native Germany. One of the most egregious liberties the showmakers took was with the depiction of Arminius as a sort of adopted son to Varus. He more than likely would have hated him and everything he stood for, evidenced in the fact that he turned against him and would probably have found it pretty easy to do so. Was Arminius actually a multiculturalist then? Stick around to find out. The creators of the show have clearly tried to move away from anything that could implicate them as Nazi sympathizers, and how they, the Nazis, viewed Arminius. Of course, Varus was almost certainly a chauvinistic imperialist who put Rome up on a proverbial pedestal and as such looked down his nose at other cultures. Arminius is depicted as a believer in multiculturalism, but it is incredibly likely that he simply thought of his own people the way Varus thought of the Romans. In the final episode, we hear Arminius tell Varus's severed head in German, you never understood that some people want to live 
live differently from you. They believe different, they feel different, and they think different than you. This is an incredibly modern way of thinking, and of course, it is true, but back then, it probably wouldn't have even been a thing. Whilst Arminius was a staunch defender of Germanic culture, it's likely that he disapproved of Rome and whatever it stood for back then, which would mean he was actually not a believer in multiculturalism whatsoever. He is portrayed as a nation builder, but not nationalistic. This idea would have been far too close to the bone where Germany's recent past is concerned, so the creators have moved to distance themselves from portraying him as a racist. Of course, this shows creators can do whatever they want as long as they acknowledge that it's a work of fiction, as you cannot change what happened in the past, and it's important we don't forget. And what about the depiction of everything Roman? Let's see. First and foremost, Roman officers are shown on horseback very often throughout the show. Whilst riding, they are seen to be using stirrups. This was never the case. The events of the show took place in the first century, and stirrups didn't become widely used until the sixth century. They simply rode with their feet hanging loose. Arminius's armor is a little off too. The abdominal section is quite over-exaggerated, and there wouldn't have been a defined six-pack, with Arminius more than likely having worn some sort of scale armor. The Roman architecture is also slightly off. We see Arminius and his brother being taught by Varus at one point, in a building with generic white marble columns and plain floors. These columns in reality would have been painted and the floors would have had some sort of decorative pattern on. Anyone who's been to the Pantheon in Rome will know what we're talking about. Of course, these are small things, but there were also bigger, more noticeable differences, such as the scene where Arminius is praying to a white, unpainted god. In reality, these would have been brightly colored and lifelike. We believe the Germanic side also probably would have had a couple of inaccuracies. However, there is nowhere near as much recorded evidence in the life of the Germanic tribes as there is of Roman life. What did you guys make of the depiction of Roman life? And finally, we're talking language. As you might imagine, the Germanic tribes speak in a modern High German dialect, whereas their Roman counterparts speak in classical Latin. The Latin, at least, is probably quite accurate and is thought to be very close to what people of the time would have spoken, and the creators clearly did their homework. However, the same cannot be said for the Germanic tribes. The language used on the show is a modern German, but according to Roman historian and writer Pliny the Elder, the Cheruski wouldn't have spoken this particular language. Arminius's Cheruski were members of the Erminones or Hermanones. Pliny claims that the Arminius tribe would have spoken Irmonic or Elbe German, which is thought to have been what modern German is derived from. The real Arminius almost certainly wouldn't have been familiar with the German language that him and his tribe are depicted as speaking on the show. As well as this, the other Germanic tribes would have spoken a version of the Proto-Germanic language modern-day German comes from. What did you guys make of what the show's creators had done with barbarians? If there's anything you think we've missed, let us know in the comments. As usual, thanks for joining us today and remember to swing by again next time for some more fun reveals. And why not do us a solid by liking and sharing today's video with any fans of the Netflix show you know of, or any fans of history in general. Bye guys!